Good morning, church family, and welcome to our Sunday morning service. This Mother's Day Sunday, as we count the blessings of our mothers this morning and today, let's sing that song together, all right? Count your many blessings, name them one by one. When upon life's pillows you are tempest-tossed, when you are discouraged thinking all is lost, count your many blessings, name them one by one. And it will surprise you what the Lord hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God hath done. Are you ever burdened with a load of care? Does the cross seem heavy you are called to bear? Count your many blessings, every doubt will fly, and you will be singing as the days go by. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God hath done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. Thank you, Tim and Anna, and good morning, church family, and we have truly been so blessed. Amen? And, of course, one of the blessings is the blessing of motherhood, and this is Mother's Day, as Tim's already mentioned. And uh, we are celebrating motherhood today, and, and we mothers, grandmothers, we just hope that this is a blessed, blessed day for you. I often think of Psalms 127 and 128 uh, during, when we think about the home, the family, and Mother's Day, Father's Day, and how their God tells us that children are a heritage of the Lord, they are, they're, they are His reward. And what greater goal to give your life to than helping to raise a godly seed that will learn the truth, know the truth, live the truth of God, and stand in the gate in the public place. And boy, there's ever a day when we need to just speak the truth in love. It's these times we're living in. And mothers, we want to thank you for the godly influence you are on our children and our grandchildren during these days. And we truly do have much to be blessed for. In a moment, we'll have prayer together, and I encourage you to pray, of course, for each other and uh, families during this time. Continue to pray for our leaders in Washington, our president, our national leaders. Continue to pray for our governor and our leaders, of course, in uh, Richmond, uh, our state capital, and as churches and businesses begin now to take steps to reopen and, and get our country moving again, we all really do need uh, the wisdom of God during these times. Mothers, we are looking forward to seeing some of you a little bit later this afternoon. And you mothers uh, in our church family, you know what that's all about. We're looking forward to that. And also, uh, I want to go ahead and mention that we want you to pray for us here at Valley Baptist Church. Uh, the church staff and the deacons, we are uh, communicating with each other. And right now, our plan is to have our first service back here at the church building one week from today. That's right, next Sunday, God willing, next Sunday morning, uh, May 17th. Uh, and we'll get more information out to you this week. Uh, right now, we're planning to have two services next Sunday morning, and we're going to divide the church family uh, by age. And right now, we're looking at maybe uh, the first service will be those 60 and older, and then at 9 o'clock next Sunday morning, and then at 11 o'clock, uh, we'll have a service for all those, say, 59 and under. And that's just a general guideline, but we'll get more information out to you uh, this week. But unless things change, that's our plan right now. So pray for us. We don't want to go from one extreme to the other. We don't want to rush right back into things. And do pray. We, we, we are sensitive to people's health and needs during this time. So you pray with us that God will give us wisdom and give you wisdom uh, to decide what you need to do during these times also. 
and we're looking forward to that. But we're glad today that again we're able to come together by way of social media. Let's pray together. Father, we do want to thank you. Thank you, God, for the truth of that song that we were just singing. We have so many blessings. In spite of the trials, the heartaches, the difficulties of this life, and Lord, the truth is here in America, compared to so much of the world, oh God, we, you've been so merciful, so gracious to us. We truly have so much to be thankful for. But God, right now we take a moment to thank you on this Mother's Day. We thank you for every God-fearing, Bible-believing, Christ-honoring lady. Well, some of them have not ever had the privilege of being a mother for whatever the reason may be. But we thank you, God, for every one of them. We thank you, God, especially for the mothers and the grandmothers. And God, today we do pray that you'll be with our president, our vice president, our families, all of our leaders, Lord, on the national level, the state level. And God, that you'll continue to give them wisdom, that they'll make decisions, God, that are truly honoring to you and based on what they truly believe is best for our country, our state, our communities, not just for, for political advantages and purposes and for selfish, selfish agendas and so forth. We pray, God, that you'll give businesses <clears throat> uh, wisdom during these days. We pray, God, that you'll give pastors and church leaders, give us all wisdom during these days, God, to make the right decisions and help us as individuals and as families, Lord, to be wise and and uh, trust you by faith, but not be foolish and continue to take all the precautions we can to protect our health and so forth. And then, God, we just pray your blessings upon your word as it goes forth today from this church as well as so many churches across our county. We've been so blessed. And as it goes forth around the world, may souls be saved, may Christians grow in the Lord, and may Jesus Christ be honored and glorified in all that we do. And we'll thank you and praise you for it all. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Scripture tells us that thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. Let's sing about that peace this morning, all right? Like a river glorious is God's perfect peace. Like a river glorious is God's perfect peace over all victorious in its bright increase. Perfect yet it floweth fuller every day. Perfect yet it We've already mentioned that today is Mother's Day, and we have a short video tribute to say thank you to all of those that have that wonderful title of Mother.
I'm thankful for my mom because she loves me and she's always there for me. I'm thankful that mom does all the stuff for us and she loves us and she takes care of us. I'm thankful for my mom and washing dishes, cutting me, snuggling me, singing me, and uh, giving me food for the last time. I'm thankful for my mom tucking me in the bed, tucking me warm, doing me hugging me, kissing me, and the end. Mom, we just wanted to say that we love you so much um, and we're so appreciative of everything that you do for us. And uh, I just wanted to say that you're the strongest woman that I know, and if I'm half the mother that you are someday, then I'll be very happy with myself. John, do you have anything to say? And you're my favorite out of all my mother-in-laws. <laughs> love you. We love you. Krista, we just wanted to say that we love you so much, and we're very appreciative of everything that you do for us. Um, we're so happy that you're in our lives. Happy Mother's Day. We love, love you. you. Bye. Three things that I love about you are that you're an amazing cook, you're beautiful, and you put your kids first. Three things that I love about my mom are that she is so beautiful, loving, and supportive. I love her smile, her willpower, and her honesty. I love about my mom are she's a good Christian, she's a great cook, and she's good at advice. I'm thankful for my mom because she loves me, always wants what's best for me. I'm thankful for mom because she helps me with school and she takes care of my kids. Thankful for mommy because she's a good cook and she loves me. Mommy, I love you because you love me and because you love Jesus. I'm thankful for all that my mother does for my family. I'm thankful that my mom is a good cook. I'm thankful that my mom cares for me and when I'm sick, she cares for me. I'm thankful for my mom because I love her. Thank you for my mom! and grandmoms who are listening right now, we truly, sincerely hope you have a happy Mother's Day today. And we don't just say that just because it's a holiday, Mother's Day, but we really uh, want to honor you, acknowledge you, 
and let you know how much you're loved and appreciated. And I say that on behalf of our entire church family here at Valley Baptist Church. Matter of fact, I hope the service already, the music and, and all that you've already seen uh, and has gone on in this service has been an encouragement and a ministry and a blessing to your heart. So we truly desire to honor you today, you mothers and grandmothers. And by the way, if you happen to be listening as a God-fearing lady, and maybe you're not a mother, maybe for whatever the reason may be, we want to honor you also because the, one of the greatest assets of any nation and society is a God-fearing mother, a God-fearing lady, and we appreciate each one of you. And you know, matter of fact, in honoring you, <clears throat> we are also obeying God. And one thing about it, you can't go wrong in obeying God. Uh, one of the Ten Commandments found in Exodus chapter 20 and verse 12, I believe, says to honor thy father and mother. And God connected a very important, precious promise with obeying that commandment of honoring our parents. And that is that, uh, that uh, days may be long upon the land which God giveth you. And so that commandment of obedience to God in honoring our parents and realizing that included in that is training our children, the principles of obedience and respect for authority is a tremendous building block for any strong nation and society. And that's God's promise connected with that commandment of God. So we're obeying the Lord, but not just out of obedience or not just because we're having a holiday. From our hearts, we truly want to honor you and acknowledge you today as mothers and grandmothers. Now, to do that for a few minutes, what I'd like to do is call your attention to a story in the Bible concerning a mother and a grandmother. A mother and a grandmother that were very highly honored. And in your mind right now, you're trying to figure out, now what story is he going to take us to? Well, actually, this particular story, uh, most of the story deals not with a mother and a grandmother. It ends up that way. But most of this story deals with a mother-in-law and a daughter-in-law. Now your wheels are turning. You're guessing right now what story I'm going to take you to. And by the end of the story, the daughter-in-law becomes a mother and the mother-in-law becomes a grandmother. And this story is found in the Old Testament scriptures. Did, did I hear someone say Ruth? You're right. Go with me to the Old Testament book of Ruth if you would. Uh, the Old Testament book of Ruth and uh, let's go to chapter 2. Let me share a couple of verses with you. And, and we want to talk about honoring our mothers and our grandmothers. And Naomi, the grandmother, or the mother-in-law, and Ruth, the daughter-in-law, who becomes a mother later in the story, they are very highly honored. I just want to pick two or three things out, two or three ways that they are honored. Uh, two or three things that uh, they're honored for. And hopefully it'll be an encouragement and a challenge to our hearts today and a way that we can honor you uh, as a mom and a grandmom today. If you have that Bible, and I hope you have your Bible with you there and follow along with me in the Old Testament book of Ruth. It's right after the book of Judges, right before the book of 1 Samuel, right in between the Old Testament books of Judges and 1 Samuel is that little book of Ruth. And I'm in Ruth chapter 2, and I'm going to begin reading with verse 11. Ruth chapter 2, beginning with verse 11. And Boaz answered and said unto her, that is Ruth. And Boaz answered or responded and said unto her, Ruth, It hath fully been showed me all that thou hast done unto thy mother-in-law since the death of thine husband, and how thou hast left thy father and thy mother and the land of thy nativity, and, has, and art come to a people which thou knewest not hitherto for. Now watch verse 12. Ruth chapter 2 verse 12. The Lord recompense thy work, and a full reward be given thee of the Lord God of Israel, under whose wings thou art come 
to trust. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Our Father today, we do seek to honor you first of all. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And we seek to be obedient to you. And we know, God, we can't go wrong in obeying you. But out of a heart of sincerity and love, Lord, we seek to honor and acknowledge and express our thankfulness to you and to these dear God-fearing moms and grandmothers and ladies who are, we're speaking to today. May the Holy Spirit increase their faith, encourage their hearts. God, we thank you for them. We pray, God, as we look into your word now, that the Holy Spirit will lead us and guide us and just give us some wisdom uh, to take the principles and truths of your word and apply them to our lives, our marriages, our homes, our families. And we thank you, God, for your blessings. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. I want you to notice, first of all, in this second chapter of the book of Ruth, that Boaz... Boaz acknowledges and honors Ruth by mentioning in verse 12 her work. Boaz said, the Lord recompense thy work. Now, let me try to summarize the story for just a minute. It kind of, most of us are very familiar with it, but just to kind of refresh our memory. In chapter 1 of this book, it's really a story of heartache and heartbreak because Naomi and her husband Abimelech, and, and she's a mother, she, she's a wife, she's a mother, she has two sons, and there's a famine in the land of Judah. All this is recorded in the first chapter, and they, they choose to leave the land of homeland and go into the country of Moab. Many believe that they were stepping out of the will of God and they should have stayed in their homeland and, and trusted God to take them through the famine. But for whatever reason, they decided to leave. And you know the story uh, of Naomi's husband dies and her two sons get married and they die. And uh, they die before there are any children conceived and born. And we don't have all the details. But now uh, both of these ladies are widows. Not only this mother-in-law and her daughter-in-law are both widows, and they decide to come back to the land of, uh, of Israel and to the city of Bethlehem where Naomi was originally from. And so here in chapter 2, we find the, the family situation of Ruth and Naomi this time is this. They are two widows, a mother-in-law and a daughter-in-law, both of their husbands have passed away. Naomi's two sons have passed away. And so here they are in that situation, two widows. And God had provided in the nation of Israel a way that the widows and the poor could make a living. And that is that uh, a certain amount on the outer fields, when it's barley harvest, it's harvest time, and they could come in and freely glean uh, 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 the, the barley and, and the poor and the widows of that day. It wasn't just automatically handed to them. It wasn't a government welfare system. And if they were uh, able-bodied workers, they, were, they could go out and glean along the edge of the field. And so in chapter 2, here we find Ruth as a daughter-in-law and Ruth as a widow whose husband had passed away and she's out there gleaning some of the barley uh, to take care of herself and her widowed mother-in-law. And so Boaz, in Ruth chapter 2, verse 12, commends her and honors her for her work. Now, the question is, what work did he have in mind? Was it the fact that at that time she is out there literally working and gleaning uh, some of the barley grain for her sake and her mother-in-law? And, and, and certainly that's included. But there's so much more here to this than just that immediate work that Ruth is involved in. As a matter of fact, verse 11 gives us a clue to, to the big picture that Boaz has in mind here when he says in verse 12, The Lord recompense thy work. Or I honor you, may, and even may the Lord honor you for your work. Look back at verse 11. 
Boaz answered or responded to Ruth and said unto her, it, it hath been fully showed me all that thou hast done unto thy mother-in-law since the death of thine husband and how thou hast left thy father and thy mother in the land of your nativity and art come unto a people which thou knewest not hitherto for. I call this Ruth's life work. What had Ruth at this time in her life, what, she, what had she dedicated and committed herself to as her number one priority in her life? And you know what it was? It's to be a home builder, a family builder to the situation that she found herself in at that time. And her situation was that it was her and her mother-in-law and they both are with us. Now go back with me to chapter 1 just a minute and I want you to see this. This is so important. I ask you, you and me today, what is our number one priority? Oh, our number one, is there a greater priority in life than to be a home builder? My, how we need that in these times in which we're living. In, in, in Ruth chapter 1, Beginning with verse 14. Let's look at the background here. Ruth chapter 1 verse 14. And they lifted up their voices and wept again. Now remember, th these, these are three widows here. Naomi's husband and two sons had died. And now the, the two daughter-in-laws, uh, their husbands have died. And so we have three widows here weeping in Ruth chapter 1 verse 14. And they lifted up their voice and wept again. And, and Orpah kissed her mother-in-law. But Ruth, now I catch this. Ruth chapter 1 verse 14, Ruth clave unto her, and she said, Behold, thy sister-in-law has gone back unto her people and to her gods. Return thou after thy sister-in-law. And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee, or return from following after thee. For whither goest thou, I will go, and where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God shall be my God. Where thou diest, will I die, and there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if aught but death part thee and me. When Naomi saw that Ruth was steadfastly minded to go with her, then she left speaking unto her, and they too went until they came to Bethlehem. Now I want to ask you a question. Don't you get the picture there that at this time in Ruth's life, this, she devoted herself and committed herself and dedicated herself. This was her life work. And my purpose, my number one priority and goal in life right now is to minister to my mother-in-law and build the family and the family situation that I find myself in right now. Now come back to chapter 2 and verse 12. And I believe that's the big picture that Boaz has in mind here. I honor you, Ruth, for the life work that you've committed and dedicated yourself to at this time in your life. You know, there's no greater cause that you can dedicate yourself to, Mom, Grandma, dear God-fearing lady, than to be a godly influence to be a home builder, to strengthen and build godly homes. And the real goal and bottom line in all this, outside of honoring and glorifying God, is to raise a godly seed for the glory of God. Now in Naomi's life, whether this would, at this time she had no children, she was a widow, but maybe along the way, and we know the story, by the end of the story she is. And the goal there is to raise a godly seed. As a matter of fact, I want you to, let's, get, let's go to the end of the story, kind of get ahead of ourselves a little bit, and we come over, and, and you know the story of Ruth. It starts out in chapter 1. It's a story of heartache and heartbreak. But in chapter 2, in chapter 2, verse 1, there's hope. Chapter 2, verse 1 says, And Naomi had a kinsman of her husband's, a mighty man of wealth, of the family of Elimelech, and his name was Boaz. And so now there's hope. There's a kinsman redeemer. There's hope that God through someone can help us. And by the way, you get to chapter 3 and there's, there's not only heartache in chapter 1 and, and a hope in chapter 2, but there's help offered in chapter 3. And by the way, during all this time, 
The love bug's already bitten Boaz. He's falling in love. Matter of fact, he, he's not been bitten. He's getting eaten up by the love bug. He's falling in love with Ruth, and you'll have to go back and read the story. And Ruth perhaps has fallen in love with him. Matter of fact, by the time you get to chapter 3, a proposal takes place. And I love this verse in Ruth chapter 3 and verse 17. It says that Boaz is sending Ruth. Uh, there's, uh, they're sort of getting in engaged here and he sends Ruth back to uh, to to Naomi in chapter 3 verse 17 and he says there go not empty unto thy mother-in-law he 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 feels her apron uh, and her vet full of uh, of barley wheat to take back home and you know Boaz is a type of the Lord Jesus Christ Boaz is a type of the Lord Jesus Christ Ruth went to Boaz in a way seeking help and he did not send her away empty. <laughs> what a beautiful picture and reminder there that any time you come to the Lord, you come to God, you come to Jesus, you'll not go away empty unless you choose to go away empty. Now, Ruth could have rejected the, the, the gift that Boaz offered, but I'm going to tell you what, you, whatever your need is, mom, grandmom, whatever your need is, you come to Jesus today and you'll not leave empty unless you choose to. Isn't that a beautiful reminder of that? So there's heartache, there's hope, there's help. And by the time you get to chapter 4 in this beautiful love story here, a wedding takes place and, and, and Boaz and, 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 and Ruth get married and, uh, and their goal here is to raise a godly seed. Look with me in Ruth chapter 4, beginning with verse 11. Ruth, cha Ruth chapter 4, beginning verse 11. And all the people that were in the gate and the elders said, We are witnesses to this wedding that's going to take place. Now watch verse 11 of chapter 4. The Lord make the woman that is coming to thine house, that is, Boaz may uh, Ruth, the young woman you're about to marry, may the Lord make her like Rachel and Leah, which two did build the house of Israel, and do thou worthily in Ephrata, and be famous in Bethlehem. What they're saying is, may God bless your marriage and home, and may children just start popping out all over the place. <laughs> Boy, you know, you know, that's so opposite of so many's attitude today. We hear so much about saving the planet and and and, and controlling population and and all this. Well, hey, these Jewish families, bless their heart. You know what? They saw the need of building strong, godly homes and multiplying and raising a godly seed for the honor and glory of God. And you find this all in these scriptures here. Verse 12 of chapter 4, And let, the how, and let thy house or family be like the house or family of Haraz, whom Tamar bare unto Judah, of the seed which the Lord shall give thee of the young woman. So Boaz took Ruth, and she was his wife. And when he went into her, the Lord gave her conception, and she bare a son. And the women said unto Naomi, Blessed be the Lord which hath not left thee this day without a kinsman, that his name may be famous in Israel. And he shall be unto thee a restorer of thy life and a nourisher of thine old age. For thy daughter-in-law which loveth thee, which is better to thee than seven sons, hath borne him. And Naomi took the child and laid it in her bosom and became nurse unto it. Now when we read those verses, and I went through them quickly, don't you get the impression that these people realize that there's no greater cause in a society than raising a godly seed for the honor and glory of God. And then I want you to notice something interesting here, and this ought to be an encouragement and a challenge to you dear grandmothers who are listening right now. Verse 16 of chapter 4 says that Naomi took the child in her bosom. Now she's the grandmother, she's the, the mother-in-law and also the grandmother now, and she takes this child into her bosom and became nurse unto it. Now that word nurse is so important. That word nurse there means naturally she's not the one that's feeding the baby and nursing in that sense of the word but that word nurse there means to nourish in the sense of coming along and aiding in raising that child and strengthening that child and being a godly influence not taking the place of the parent the real mom and dad but being an encourage oh what a support and a help we as grandparents can be to our children and our grandchildren and great-grandchildren in raising a godly seed. 
Then I want you to see something else here that fits into this. You know, as you read the story here, and, 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 and Boaz and Ruth get married, and they fall in love, they get married, they start having children. And by the way, you know, that used to be how it was. You got married first, and you fell in love, you got married, and you had children. And, and well, let's be nice, let's not get into all that. And what a beautiful love story. And they have this child, and some of the friends offer a suggestion on what to name this baby. Look at this in verse 17. And the women, her neighbors, gave it a name saying, There is a son born to Naomi, and uh, they call his name Obed. He is the father of Jesse, the father of David. They, they suggest they name this boy Obed. Now, why was that? Now, follow the theme we're talking about, raising a godly seed. You know what the name Obed means? It's used in two Two connections. It means a worshiper and a servant. You put that together, and the name that they're suggesting to give to this baby, Obed, simply means a worshiping servant of God. Do you get that? A worshiping servant of God. The emphasis there again is raising a godly seed. Have you read Psalm 127 lately? Have you read Psalm 128? How God can make thee a joyful mother of children. Yes, there's frustrations and heartaches and trials along the way, but God can make you a joyful mother and grandmother of children when you've given yourself, like Ruth, your life's work, oh, what a cause to give yourself to, to help raise a godly home, a godly family, a godly seed for the honor and glory of God. There's so much more could be said about that, isn't there? So much more. But first of all, I just want to call your attention to the fact, back in Ruth chapter 2 and verse 12, that Boaz honored Ruth for the fact that she had given herself to this job this life work of building a strong family and home for the glory of God. In her situation at that time, it was just a daughter-in-law, mother-in-law, two widows living together. But oh, by the time you get to the end of the story, God had honored them and blessed them, and it was a whole different story. But let me show you a second thing very quickly. Not only did Boaz honor Ruth because of the life work that she had committed herself to, but number two, he honored her for her faith and trust in God. Ruth, the book of Ruth chapter 2 verse 12 again says, The Lord recompense thy work and a full reward be given thee of the Lord God of Israel under whose wings thou art come to trust. Did you know, I just read a statement, some, just this morning I read a statement someone made. There's no greater influence in a society than a trusting, praying mother who has faith in God. And we could say that about a grandmother. There's no greater influence in a society. You know, I just, just this morning, we got an email from one of our missionary families that we as a church support. I won't name the name because they serve God in a, in a very uh, dangerous part of the world, and for security reasons, we won't mention the name. But in this email that I just read this morning, he was thanking God and praising God for his God-fearing mother, a woman of faith who believed in prayer. And, and I believe this mother's still living, still praying. And how that when they, uh, this man and his wife and, and children decided to leave America and go to this very dangerous place, part of the world to serve God and take the gospel of Jesus Christ. It wasn't easy. And yet this mother, his mother, was willing like Jochebed. Remember Jochebed, the mother of Moses? <laughs> well, she was willing to place little Moses in the basket and just place that child in the hands of God and trust God in those very difficult times they were living in. And this missionary in this email pointed how my mother, like Jochebed, was willing to just, as hard as it was, to just turn us loose and pray for us, and trust God to take care of us. Wow, what a, what a challenge of a mother and a grandmother. And this is good for all of us, not just the mothers and grandmothers. Oh, what Boaz honored Ruth 
for the fact that she was willing to come under the wings of the true and living God, Jehovah God, and put her faith in him. Talking about moms and grandmoms, what about, remember Timothy in the New Testament? Paul was writing Timothy, and I believe it was in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 1, and he said, Timothy, Timothy, I'm convinced that your faith in God, your trust in God, it's real, it's genuine, it's an unfeigned faith. But he also reminds Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 1 that that faith was first in his mother and his grandmother. Remember that? Eunice, Lois, they're mentioned. Another mom and grandma mentioned there in 1 Timothy chapter 1 and their faith. 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 5, 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 5, the apostle Peter makes reference to those holy, holy, God-fearing women of old who trusted in God. The value, Peter reminds us, 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 5, of those holy, God-fearing women of old who trusted in God. What a value, what an asset they are, not only to their own families and churches and communities but their entire society and the world as a whole so ruth is honored for her work her life work she committed herself to her family she's honored for her faith in god and and i just commend you and and mothers i don't know what your situation is right now i don't know what trials you're you know going back to ruth chapter one they, they, they experienced a famine before Ruth ever came into the picture. Now, God in his providence and sovereignty can work all things together for his glory and our good. We understand that. But sometimes when a trial and a difficulty comes, it's easy to want to jump out of the frying pan, isn't it? It's easy to want to, the grass looks greener on the other side of the fence. And sometimes if we're not careful, we can, can hastily make a decision or jump into a new situation and I know it's all not a bed of roses. There's trials and difficulties in raising children and taking care of grandchildren and raising a home these days. But listen, trust God, obey God, put the principles and truths of God's word to practice, and God will honor you for it. And we commend you for your faith and trust in God. But let me show you a third thing very quickly that God, through Boaz, honored Ruth for her life's work, her faith. But look over at chapter 3, and this is so important. In chapter 3, beginning with verse 10, look what Boaz says. Chapter 3, verse 10. And he, Boaz, said to Ruth, Blessed be thou of the Lord, my daughter, for thou hast showed more kindness in the latter end than at the beginning, inasmuch as thou followest not young men, whether poor or are rich. But now, my daughter, fear not. I will do to thee all that thou requirest. Now, watch this Ruth chapter 3, verse 11. For all the city, the whole city and village of Bethlehem, for all the city of my people doth know that thou art a virtuous woman. Wow, a virtuous woman. He commends her for being a virtuous woman. Now, what does that mean? What's the big picture here? Well, usually we think a virtuous woman is one of moral purity and a woman of principles and character, and that's absolutely true. And as important as that is, wow, isn't that important? Yes. But it's a bigger picture than just that. I want you to notice back in Ruth chapter 2, if you have your Bible open, in Ruth chapter 2, verse 1, when Boaz is first mentioned, notice what it says about Boaz in Ruth chapter 2, verse 1. And Naomi had a kinsman of her husband's, of her husband's a mighty man, a strong, mighty man, a well-known man of wealth. A mighty man of wealth of the family of Elimelech, and his name was Boaz. Do you see that word wealth in Ruth chapter 2, verse 1? That word wealth, it's the same word that's translated virtuous in chapter 3, verse 11. Now, you know, Boaz honors Ruth by saying, the whole city of Bethlehem knows that thou art a virtuous, or watch this, a wealthy woman. Wealthy? <laughs> Remember, she's a widow. 
Her whole family situation up to this point is just her and her mother-in-law who's a widow. Wealthy? She's gleaning. She's living on the system that was established in her nation, in the nation of Israel at that time, the nation she chose to become a part of. She's out there, basically, we would call it today, living on the welfare system. She's not wealthy from the world's perspective. But God honored her. You know what? She, listen, it was wealth that this old world is so blind to sometimes. But notice something else. Notice, notice in chapter 4 of Ruth. Now, now, are you listening? Put that coffee cup. Pay attention. Well, this, this is so important. <laughs> I'm, I'm about to get excited about preaching to a camera. Can you imagine that? Wow, look at this. Ruth chapter 4 and verse 11. Now, this, we're at the end of the story, and we've tried to summarize and put it all together very quickly. And they've fallen in love. They've gotten married, and by this time she's already... Uh, gotten pregnant and the baby's been born and a lot of time has gone by and in Ruth chapter 4 verse 11 it says and all the people that were in the gate and the elders said we're witnesses the Lord make the woman that is coming to thine house like Rachel and like Leah uh, the two that built the house of Israel now watch the latter part of verse 11 of chapter 4 and may this woman Boaz do thou worthily in Ephrata and be famous in Bethlehem. Do you see that word worthily? Worthily? It's the same word that's translated wealth in chapter 2 verse 1. It's the same word that's translated virtuous in chapter 3 verse 11. And in chapter 4 verse 11, what they're saying is, hey, this woman will do you worthily. She'll be such an asset to you, Boaz. She'll be such an asset to your family, to the whole nation of Israel, to the city of Bethlehem. So when Boaz honored Ruth in chapter 3 verse 11 by calling her a virtuous woman, he was saying, what a value, what an influence. Remember what Proverbs chapter 31, Proverbs chapter 31 and verse 10 says, Who can find a virtuous woman for her price? Now watch this. Her value, her worth is far above rubies. Far above rubies. I wish we had time. I challenge you. To go read 1 Peter chapter 3, the first seven verses. The first seven verses of 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 7 talks about the worth and the value of that godly, holy woman we made reference to a few minutes ago. In 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 5, Peter talked about the value of those women of old, those holy women of God like Sarah and others that trusted in God. And in those seven verses there in 1 Peter chapter 3, Peter talks about how the, it's not so much the outward wealth of, of the clothing and the house and the cars and the driveway and all these things are important. And we thank God for he, we've been so blessed in America, but all oh, the value value from God's perspective of that inner beauty and that meek and quiet spirit and all those qualities of life that the Holy Spirit mentions there in 1 Peter chapter 3 by the Apostle Peter. The value, the worth of a godly mother, a godly grandmother, a godly God-fearing lady and so forth. Well, I wish we had time to go more, but we've pointed out at least three Ways, three things that God, through Boaz and basically a whole city, a whole city, they honored Naomi. They said, Naomi, listen, you're talking about a virtuous woman. They said, Naomi, this, God has given you this daughter in law, Ruth, who is as valuable to you and beneficial to you as seven sons could have been. Wow, what honor, what honor. What a challenge. But let's wrap it up this way. Did you notice there, we read earlier there in chapter 4 and verse 17 at the end of the story, at the end of the story, that 
Ruth and Boaz have a baby. They name him Obed, which means a worshiping servant. And he becomes the grandfather of King David. That's right. Ruth becomes Ruth becomes the great grandmother of King David, which means Naomi would have been the great great grandmother. Imagine that. Imagine that. And you're talking about being honored. In Matthew chapter 1, the very first chapter of the New Testament in verse 5, in the genealogy of Christ, Ruth has her name mentioned. Matthew chapter 1, verse 5. Wow. What an honor of God. What an honor. You know you can't go wrong obeying God, living for Jesus, serving Him, putting the principles of God's Word to practice in your life, in your marriage, in your home, in your family. Now most of us will probably never have our names written on billboards with shining lights. But the most important thing, Jesus said this in Luke chapter 10 and verse 20. Rejoice that your name is written down in heaven. Ruth's name is recorded in Matthew chapter 1 verse 5. We're talking about how God honored Ruth and Naomi and through Boaz, through the whole city of Bethlehem and so forth. But Jesus reminded us in Luke chapter 10 verse 20, rejoice that your name is written down in heaven. Let me ask you a question, mom, grandma, any of us, is your name written in the Lamb's book of life? Boaz is a type of the Lord Jesus Christ in his mercy and love and kindness. There's so many pictures there. And the most important thing in any of our lives today is that you've come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. He'll forgive you of your sins. He'll save you. His grace is sufficient to meet every need that you have. Let's pray. Father, use your word today to challenge us, encourage us, minister to us. And most of all, draw the lost to Jesus that they may be saved. Remind us today, God, that your grace, your mercy is sufficient in every situation we find ourselves in. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. If we can be of any help to you at all, please contact us here at the Valley Baptist Church. God bless you, moms. Happy Mother's Day.